work that I did. I... God. Some work that I did uh, with with Dujan, but also with my advisor, Kostogashe, fellow graduate student at Maryland, Sagar Aaron, uh, faculty at Roma Trey, Roberto Franceschini, um, the head of the CDF, Delhi Mass Measurement, Ashutosh Football at Duke, and then a uh, postdoc at Maryland, Lorenzo Ricci. So just to give some uh, background, so in April of 2022, CDF announced a kind of a major discovery of or major measurement of this uh, W mass, W boson mass. Um, and that is shown here, this run two measurement of CDF, to which they found it uh, an uncertainty of uh, less than 10 MeV. But the notable thing was that they found the seven sigma discrepancy with the prediction from the standard model electric weak fit here in this shaded gray region. Um, however, in April or March of 2023, about a year later, Atlas uh, published a remeasurement of their run one analysis and found it to be consistent with the prediction from the electric fit with a slightly larger but still very precise 17 or 16 MeV. So these measurements are extremely precise, order 10 to the minus four. Um, these kinds of measurements are not only consistency checks for the standard model, but also potentially could be probes for new physics. Now, the usual way for probing that new physics is by comparing the measurement, these measurements in blue, to the prediction from the electric weak fit, um, which tests sort of indirect effects of heavy new physics. Uh, and a lot of papers came out after this April 22 result showing that you know heavy new physics can maybe shift the electric weak fit to match CDF, but we're trying to do it a different way. Uh, we really want to ask the question: can these measurements alone uh, test effects of direct? New physics in the measured sample. So we really want to remove the electric fit from the picture and just look at these two measurements and, and ask whether they can probe uh, new physics. So how do you actually measure MW? Uh, so there's two types of decay. One is the hadronic decay of the W into two physical final states, uh, two port or two jets. But so you can reconstruct this, but the uncertainty from reconstruction is really large, this jet energy scale uncertainty. Uh, you will not get a very precise measurement. So what experimentalists do is they look at um, the leptonic decay of the W, so lepton plus a neutrino. This is a cleaner channel than hadronic decay, but the neutrino is invisible, so you can't fully reconstruct this. Um, and the fact that it's also semi-invisible means that it could be a good hideout for any invisible new physics. So then how do they actually use a leptonic decay? They uh, create these distributions of observables. They, they measure the observables um, PT of the lepton, the transverse momentum of the lepton, as well as the transverse mass of the event, MT, which is constructed using the missing energy uh, and missing momentum and the lepton energy and lepton momentum in the transverse plane. Uh, and then, uh, so these distributions are shown here, and here's PT of lepton and here's MT. And CDF also includes the uh, missing neutrino momentum. Um, but because Atlas doesn't, we won't really talk about it much for our analysis. And what you'll see here in these distributions is actually, you zoom in, you see that the red line is actually the fit. So they predict the shape of these distributions uh, and they fit it to the data in blue. And you find that it's actually very, uh, there, there's a strong agreement between the prediction from just the standard model to the measured data. And just to give some intuition for the PT of the lepton and the transverse mass, so at leading order in the restroom of the W, lepton and neutrino are back to back. And so each of those observables has a sharp Jacobi peak at half the W mass. Uh, so that's what you see here in black um, in simulation for PT at 40 and MT at 80. And uh, yeah, and then once you include uh, some jet which can boost the W, that uh, transverse mass does not depend on the PT of the W to leave work, uh, but the PT of the lepton does. So that's why you see that it no longer has a sharp peak in red. Uh, and so the endpoint of the empty distribution is insensitive to boost of the W, relatively insensitive. But the PT of the lepton is a much cleaner measurement. Um, so these two observables present sort of complementary systematics to each other for measuring MW. 
So then how can a mass measurement alone actually probe new physics? So any new physics signals that produce the same final state of lepton plus meth would be a background to the measurement. But what we find in these precision measurements is that the those distributions, the kinematic distributions of PC lepton and MT are in perfect agreement with standard model pr predictions with really, really high precision. And so given this agreement, you can exclude any new physics that produces the same final state, but different shaped distributions. And so the meme that I like to show here is if I show you a picture of measured distributions and a picture of the standard model operations, you'd say they're the same picture. Uh, and so a cartoon description of, of this. So here we have in green the measured data uh, of some distribution, and then in red, the standard model template, and you do a fit of the template to the data, and you find that it's perfect agreement with a little bit of uh, uncertainty. And you can extract MW from that fit. So MW would change the shape of the template. But now what we're saying is that not only should you have a standard model template, but also a new physics template, which predicts the shape from some new physics that produces lepton plus met. And when you combine those, you get a, a standard model plus new physics template in purple. And when you do that fit, you find that it's kind of a bad fit. And that way you can say that the new physics can be included for some reason of parameter shapes. So this the idea is general to any precision measurement. So for example, this has been done for uh, searching for uh, stops in SUSE using the top work mass measurement. Um, another example is searching for heavy neutrinos at the, at the LHC, um, uh, whose distributions would potentially look different from your typical one. Standard model left on plus neutrino. And, and here you can see the uh, the example for SUSE stops, where you produce a stop, and then each stop produces top plus neutralino, and these neutralinos are invisible. Uh, but the leptonic decays of W also produce an invisible particle, so you wouldn't be able to, just by final state, distinguish between stops and top production. Uh, however, we find that this kind of uh, Idea has not yet been generally implemented for a class of new physics models, for all kinds of new physics models producing lepton plus met. And the higher precision on MW 10 to the minus 4 compared to 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 3 for top mass um, allows us to probe really, really faint um, new physics signals compared to some of the earlier ideas. So then the actual new purpose for this precision W mass data is to probe new physics signals that contaminate, that could contaminate that sample by fitting templates of the kinematic observables, so the green curve that I showed earlier, to now standard model plus new physics templates. Um, so you're now simultaneously fitting both new physics and standard model templates. And you should be sensitive to regions of parameter space in the new physics model um, where the distributions will defer quote unquote, noticeably from the standard model. Um, and now, since we're probing both new physics parameters and W mass, we should perform, and measuring W mass, we should perform a global fit to both. And we'll see that this kind of contamination could actually shift the measured MW compared to if you were to just use the standard model template alone. Uh, and again, also to reiterate, we're really independent of the electronic fit here. We're only using the, the measurements of MW itself. So now I ask what kind of physics, new physics model can be wrote. So we categorize them in, in three ways. So one way is to modify the decay of the standard model W. So here you see the lepton is emitting some invisible Z prime. Um, and you, if, you, uh, if the Z prime is invisible, then you have two invisible particles plus lepton, so that's lepton plus met. You can modify the production of the standard model W. So here you have uh, the uh, ISR uh, emission of a Z prime from one of the initial state quarks. Or you could produce lepton plus met without any on shell W. And here uh, you have an off shell W producing lepton neutrino in, uh, in SUSE. And from there you get a lepton, two neutralinos, and a neutrino. So again, lepton plus met. Any questions? So then the rest of the talk is as follows uh, I'm going to show a sort of proof of principle model that L me minus L tau D prime at the standard here. She'll describe uh, how we do the shape analysis 
uh, via chi-square minimization. I'll show a resulting plot of the simultaneous fit between new physics or to new physics and MW. Uh, and then I'll show sort of R bound and comparison to existing constraints on that model. And then I'll show that for neutrino physics scalar phi, we actually can um, potentially get better constraints than what's currently out there, just using measurements of W mass. Uh, and then I'll show uh, new physics without any on-shell W. So this MSSM self constant neutrino progression, where we really claim that we can probe an unexplored parameter space of that model. Uh, and then if there's time, I'll do anomalous W progression, which is this hydrophilic Z prime, which is still ongoing. So anomalous W decay, uh, here are the two models, or diagrams from the two models. So overview of this LD minus L tau Z prime. Here we have uh, a Z prime coupling to the standard model current, uh, J, J, J rho, uh, or J, J mu minus tau rho, and a coupling to the dark sector J D, or J G D. Um, and this GZ prime is the coupling to standard model, GD is the coupling to some dark sector. The reason we need that is because we want these Z primes to really decay invisibly. And so here are the potential diagrams that you would, uh, you would get. And in order to uh, guarantee that this Z prime contributes to MET and not to some invisible vital state particle, we have to assume that GD is much bigger than GZ prime and that the mass of the dark sector particles that Z prime is decaying to are sufficiently light, so lighter than the mass of the Z prime. So with those assumptions, you will have a dominantly invisibly decaying Z prime, um, which then satisfies uh, the condition that you are seeing left on plus magic from this final state or from this model. So then what do the kinematic distributions look like for this kind of model? So here in blue, we have the, the MT distribution of L minus L tau compared to in green, the standard model uh, distribution from just W to left on plus neutrino. Uh, here's the mass and, and coupling for the model up top. Uh, so we simulated these with macro at the end of uh, and then we imposed some selection cuts that I'll show uh, in a few slides exactly what we did. So these distributions are uh, normalized to kind of show the differences that the I mean, minus alpha is not actually that big, but just to show how different, how much it, how different it looks from standard model. Uh, here in this lower panel is a signal to background ratio as there would be. And we see that it's actually like around 10 to the minus three below the Jacobian peak. Uh, one thing to note is that it's a softer spectrum. So most of the sensitivity is coming actually below the peak of the Jacob uh, Jacobian peak of the W. So we will actually, and, it, and the sensitivity is increasing below. So these dotted line, dash lines here are the atlas fitting range used to extract MW. We will actually propose going slightly lower to increase the sensitivity to new physics. Um, another thing to, to take into account is that now that we're introducing new physics that enters the W sample, uh, if that same new physics could enter the Z sample, it's important because these measurements uh, to obtain such high precision are um, using a data-driven driven approach where they calibrate to the Z data. And so you have to consider the effect of this only minus L tau model polluting the Z sample. Uh, what we find is that it's negligible if you impose an invariant mass cut um, the, the way that Atlas does to remove a lot of the new physics in that range. Um, and so here we get a 10 to the minus four S over B compared to around 10 to the minus three for the W sample. So then how do we actually now probe these new physics models? So we do what's called a, a shape analysis where we've um, compared normalized distributions of now new physics plus standard model, where standard model has some fixed MW corresponding to the experimental measured value for whichever experiment we're using. Uh, plus uh, allowing that delta MW to, to vary, so instead, essentially fitting MW, compared to the data where it's just some whatever measured value the experiment gets or measures. And now we allow both the new physics parameters, in this case, GZ prime and MZ prime, to vary and allow the uh, shift in MW as well. And uh, with that, we have this chi squared. 
and this chi squared, um, just to describe each part of it, here you have Ni, which is the expected number of events as a function of the new physics parameters and WMF. And we compare that to N bar, which is essentially mimicking our data uh, for no new physics and no shift from the measured value of WMF. And by construction, this chi squared is minimized for when there's no new physics and no shift in WMS. We're saying that if we were to um, have no new physics in our template, we should ex extract exactly what the experiment measures. Um, so these distributions are normalized following experimental procedures. So it's really only comparing the shapes and not so much a cut and count. Uh, and with this chi squared, we can exclude regions of parameter space with some like 95% confidence level for a large enough chi squared. So now actually imposing the cuts, here's a table that we show of uh, what Atlas does for their W mass measurement. And for only minus L tau, what we did. So you'll notice that uh, for new physics with softer uh, spectra in PT and MT, we propose fitting, extending the fitting range slightly lower than what they uh, have used by about 10 GV in PT and 20 GV in MT. That's going to require lower cuts on the PT of lepton and MT uh, when doing selection cuts as well, which uh, you have to consider how, you know, does that affect potential backgrounds um, and other uncertainties outside the fitting range? And we find that they're reasonably under control. Um, so we think that it, it should be okay to do it, but up to the experimentalists. Uh, and here's an example of now the simultaneous fit um, for a fixed MZ prime so that we can project it in, in 2D. So here on the horizontal axis, we're varying GZ prime and on the vertical axis, uh, varying MW. And so this is what we internally call the banana plot. It fits a banana really well. And what we see is that the simultaneous fit, when you in now include non-zero new physics, can actually induce a shift in the W mass uh, and increase potentially increase the uncertainty. Now, this limited shift does not explain the anomaly. It's not what we were trying to do, but it is something that we had looked into when we saw this behavior. Uh, so some more details about this plot here. Um, for the solid lines, this is with Herbin systematics of 0.5% uncorrelated. And the dashed lines are 0.1% systematics per bin uncorrelated. And you see here, if you were to have no new physics, so just this vertical axis, it would look like we're claiming to have an uncertainty better than what Atlas is obtaining for the measurement. So if I remember 16 MEVs, this is clearly much smaller than 16 MEVs. So what's going on? Um, so one thing to note, our projections are for sort of run two analysis, so 300 number center barns, much more statistics. But we're also not including any correlated systematics in our projections here. Um, but to sort of mitigate the fact that we are kind of claiming sensitivity that's better than what we're getting at experiments right now, we also include the effect of pileup. And so uh, you can see in red, this is the sensitivity from MT alone without any pileup included. And green is with pileup included. And you can see the effect, uh, it kind of balloons quite a bit. For PT of the lepton, it's not really affected by pileup. So what actually is pileup? So um, it's included in the simulation in delta S for us, but what it is in, in terms of the experiment, it's contamination of soft processes in the final state from lots of interacting, soft interacting uh, protons during the uh, during the collisions. And we take the average number of pileup events per bunch processing to be 50 for all the runs here. Um, and yeah, like I said, we see that the blue PT is largely insensitive. So uh, this sort of shift is not just from pileup as we see, because since PT is insensitive, we see that actually as you increase the systematics, um, PT of the left on is shifting as well. So there's a notable, notable shift, not caused by pileup, but it is really good. And then now before I get to the actual sort of our money plot for this model, uh, we have to consider any other um, current constraints on that model. So one here is this G minus two bound, uh, which is a region where this D prime could explain 
the G minus two anomaly. However, with the recent lattice calculations of HBT, we no longer know if we should really trust that there is a G minus two anomaly in this between the theory and the experiment, or in terms of the lattice calculations and experiments. And so uh, we're not really going to consider G minus two, but there is another bound here um, from CCFR, which is a dedicated experiment um, at Fermilab looking to probe neutrino interactions with a Coulomb potential. And here there would be an interference term from a, a light uh, Z prime uh, producing this neutrino trident, which is called neutrino mu plus mu minus. And here you can see in this light ratioed region, the bound from, from, that, uh, from that experiment. Then there's also this Z to form U, which uh, we have someone here who works on form U on final state at LHC. Uh, however, that is a bound on the branching ratios of Z to mu mu Z prime times Z prime to mu mu. And they assume that Z prime to mu mu is one third, which is pure set of K. If you remember, um, for our model, we have Z prime became dominantly to a dark center. And so we really think that this bound doesn't apply for us because we were saying we really want dominantly uh, invisible decay to be And so here's the actual money plot uh, where we're now minimizing over delta MW for any given point on this uh, 2D plot. So for some value of GZ prime and MV prime, we're varying delta MW, we're taking the minimum chi squared, which is the most conservative bound, and then showing um, where is it excluded to 95% confidence level. For in red, no systematics, which is not really obtainable, but just kind of shows what's the boundary condition. 0.1% uh, for bin systematics in green, and 0.5% for bin systematics in blue. And so you see that we're competitive, but not quite beating CCFR's bound for the model. Um, and another thing that you should notice is the separation between the solid and the uh, and the dash here is getting smaller and smaller. In fact, for blue, they're they're on top of each other. And so solid is run two projection, and dash is the high moving projection for the same systematics. And so what you see is that uh, as you increase your systematics, the amount of statistics that you're increasing doesn't really help your sensitivity to the bit, to the new physics. So this is really a systematics dominated result. Um, so that really motivates trying to improve the systematics because that way then when you get more and more statistics, you can in increase your reach uh, and sensitivity to new physics. So two points of emphasis here. One, are, are these choices of 0.1% and 0.5% reasonable uh, for, for this region of um, space that they're probing? And what about Yeah. What about this CDF line that I'm also showing here that I haven't talked about yet? So here you see the CDF with no systematics, and that's uh, the exclusion that we obtain, which is somewhat competitive with what, what the LHC is doing as well. So one for the choice of permanent systematics. So here's from the Atlas remeasurement, uh, the plot of the MT of the W, and they actually quote uh, the statistics plus systematics in this sort of dash region on the bottom panel uh, to be less than 0.5%, and that's combined. And so we think that this could motivate 0.1% and 0.5% for data systematics for our analysis. Uh, and we think that also there should be improvements in systematics in future measurements of MW. So we think that it should be obtained um, near term and long term. And then what about CDF? So here we also did an analysis for CDF for this model and all the other sort of light physics models where CDF could be sensitive. And um, so here's a, the example of the 2D plot. Blue is PT lepton, green is transverse mass. Um, dash versus solid is with and without the detector effects. So here you actually see there's less bending. So it's not quite a banana plot, it's more like a cucumber plot or something like that. Uh, and, and you see that it's it's more precise as well than what they're, because they're claiming better precision. And we we actually simulated the detect detector effects independently of delta, so they don't have a CDF run card. Um, so we actually had Ashutosh's help in 
implementing detector effects for TDF. And um, what we see is that the CDF projections are really statistic dominated, meaning that even if you could get your systematic all the way down to zero, you won't really get better than projections for LHC, even at 300 neurocentric mark. Um, and so it's it's an interesting result, but not quite one that we can improve on in the future because the idea has stopped running. So we can't get any more statistics um, from CDM. Uh, okay, so then another example of modified LEDK. Uh, here we have the neutrino Felix scalar model. Uh, so here we have some uh, dimension six operator, which in the low energy effective limit uh, reduces to a lambda nu nu phi coupling. And so here we have new physics parameters lambda and m phi. You see again, similar to only myself, Kazi prime, that you have a softer spectrum for the new physics distributions. And for this model, because the phi is only coupled to the neutrinos, you don't have to worry about z calibration because you can just look for fully visible decays in z. And The balance on the existing uh, on on this existing balance on this model. So here, at, at for low phi mass, you have meson decay rates uh, dominating the bound. Um, you have neutrino beam experiments like Dune, potential cosmological constraints, uh, ice cube as well, including projections from ice cube. But at higher phi mass, uh, it seems that it's mostly collider dominated. So here you have invisible z decays from I think WEP. Uh, to new new phi, and that's the current strongest bound for like this region. And then um, for high limit projections, you can get uh, Higgs to new new phi, invisible Higgs decays is the strongest bound to this model. Uh, and so this is still preliminary because we haven't quite finalized uh, the pileup effects, but uh, we find that for this sort of region where um, the collider bound is the strongest, we find that we can actually beat it. Um, as long as the systematics are well controlled, so within 0.1% or better. Uh, and that's for 300 universal interbarn projection compared to Z2 nu nu phi. And then for high we actually also find that we are either beating or somewhat or competitive with it again for um, good enough systematics control. And uh, that's compared to the H2 nu nu phi. This model still needs to incorporate pilot effects, but overall things are looking quite promising. So now, uh, new physics without on shell W. So this is uh, my favorite part. So here we have uh, SUSY, Slipstone Neutrino Production. So supersymmetry, very well known, well studied. Um, and it provides a very simple mechanism for lepton plus met, which is the slepton neutrino, and then slepton into lepton plus neutralino. We assume that all the other superpartners are heavy, which have been motivated uh, in a sleptonic SUSY paper by some of my collaborators because uh, of Majid Akarachi and Jen Liu and Raman Syndrome. Uh, so we consider two regimes for this model, one where the lightest neutralino chi is the LSP. And so you have slepton into lepton plus neutralino and neutrino into neutralino plus neutrino. But there's also the region where the neutrino is the LSP. And so you could have a stable neutrino and then the neutralino decays into neutrino and neutrino. Um, you would think that you would have only three or three new physics uh, parameters here, one being the slip on mass, neutrino mass, and neutrino mass. But in the MSSM, the neutrino mass is fixed by this uh, by this D term or relation from the D term. And we choose 10 beta limit to be very large so that you have the lightest uh, neutrino as possible. Existing bounds on this model here we have. Um, we only show above 100 GV in the slepton mass because LEP has ruled out um, slepton masses below 100 GV. Heavier sleptons have negligible cross sections at Tevatron because they ran like, 2 TV center mass energy. So uh, we won't really talk about CDF here. But um, the LHC has searched for dice lepton production. And so that's this shaded gray region uh, from Atlas. And then also the shaded orange region where they include uh, a jet 
for self-lepton uh, searches. And so they're really looking at this channel, dice lepton production into two leptons plus two neutralinos. But you see that there's actually a gap in this search in this white space where they're unable to probe because the standard model background is so large in that, in that compressed region when the mass gap between the slepton and the neutralino is comparable to the standard model particle masses. And there have also been proposals to use precision LEW data to disentangle dislepton events. However, we find that the gap still exists. And they're really doing a 1D fit where they're assuming MW measure independently, but we're saying you should do a simultaneous fit to both the new physics parameters and to MW uh, in, in this region. And so this red benchmark point here, um, that's a point in the space that hasn't been probed. And you can see that for, it's for these masses, 115 GV leptons, 70 GV neutralino. This is the distribution that you get from that that choices of those choices of masses. And you see that the SUSY distributions are quite flat compared to uh, the standard model. And so what uh, what's happening here is that you're seeing quite a bit of additional sensitivity above the Jacobian peak compared to the previous ones below the Jacobian peak. Now, be also because it's flat, once you combine the new physics plus the standard model, uh, you probably won't expect there to be a shift in MW because there's not another peak that can kind of mimic this peak. Um, so you could fix delta MW equal to zero, but then you would have to know some prior knowledge on it. And uh, so instead, we will do the same technique of minimizing the chi squared over a range of delta MWs. So we're really taking the smallest chi squared again. So that's the most conservative bound that we get by varying delta MW. Um, while varying the slot con and neutralino mass. Again, here in this bottom figure is showing the S over B. So you see that it's quite small, the signal over background ratio, until you get beyond the Jacobian peak of the W. And then it's rising considerably as you get beyond the Atlas fitting range. So we will again sort of propose uh, extending the fitting range, but now in the higher region rather than the lower region. Uh, and you'll also have to consider, again, contamination from Z uh, or in the Z sample from dice left on. Um, but after the invariant mass cut, you can again kind of, um, it's, it's quite negligible. So then here again is the existing bounds, and here's what we can do with W mass. So with left on centrinos, we can actually probe that unexplored space. Uh, just to give a few more details on each of these contours, because there's quite a few of them. Uh, again, in red is no systematics. In green is 0.1%. In blue is 0.5%. We show run two projections in, in solid with pileup included in the simulation. And so that's the solid green and solid red here, and also technically solid blue. Uh, and then without pileup is the dotted uh, dotted contours, green, blue, or sorry, green and red. Uh, and so that's where there's no pileup included in the situation where pileup can be mitigated somehow, whether you do low pileup runs or if you're able to somehow control the effect of pileup to better than what we're simulating here. We show how much you can improve your reach. Uh, and then the high Lumi projections are shown in the, the, the thicker dashed contours, where you're able to really even probe up to say 130 to even beyond 150 GV left on that. Uh, and then again, we see that this result is, is that it's systematic saturated, meaning if you go to 0.5% systematics, you see very little improvement from high lumen projections. So the extension of the fitting range, uh, we're using now the same cuts <laughs> for selection as we had before, but we're now extending the fitting range. But that extension depends on, in our analysis, depends on whether pileup is included or not. So if you don't include pileup, you only need to mildly extend the fitting range by 10 GV in PT and 20 GV in MT. If you do include pileup, the problem is that this hadronic recoil cut UT cuts away a lot of the signal, but you can make up some of that loss of sensitivity by extending again slightly uh, by another 10 GV, and you can make up quite a bit of it so that you're still able to probe that gap. Uh, and so this kind of extending it even further and further kind of begs the question, 
Um, and you get even more sensitivity extending all the way to 500 dB in the tube. And so that is this uh, Susie leptons in the tail of the liposome. So what do I mean exactly? So here I show a sort of cartoon diagram. Here's the MW fitting range. Here's the extended range that we proposed for searching for Susie, where you extend a little bit uh, in the, in the, into the tails of the PNMT. And what I mean by now a tail analysis, come on, is this. So starting from roughly where we ended to up to say 500 dB, but really moving away from the peak of the W, more like a cut and count analysis almost. So this is work that's going to appear in our follow-up paper, uh, hopefully sometime as well. And so what we're doing now is we're really moving to the tails, where the background is now uh, off-shell production of W, or what we'll be calling Frillian, um, to lepton plus neutrino. Because we're moving to the tails, we're really no longer normalizing to the data. And so you should expect that the sensitivity should improve as you uh, move away from the dominant background region. But that background is no longer as under control as in the region where they're measuring W mass. So you should have to consider larger urban systematics and an error on the luminosity because we're no longer normalizing. So that's correlated systematics. And then you should consider any other standard model backgrounds that could be contributing in that region uh, of the tail of uh, PT and MQ to lepton plus metal. Uh, and then a question that we actually got from an experimentalist was, could a recast at W prime search work for this channel? And so there they're really looking for um, lepton plus single invisible particle, but they're looking at up to multi-TV range, like 7 TV and MT, uh, 4 TV and PT. So the basic idea is now we're moving away from the tail, but we now have to wonder, or we have to ask what kind of cuts should be used for this kind of analysis. So you could use cuts inspired by MW, which is hadronic recoil, minimum PT, minimum MT. Um, and we propose that, but now move them to be above the Jacobian peak. Uh, or you could do sort of W prime cuts. And so there, they don't do a hadronic recoil cut. They have minimum PT lepton, minimum MT, and then they look at, because they're expecting um, lepton neutrino, um, a ratio between the PT of the lepton and PT missing, to be around one, and then an angular separation between PT missing and PT lepton uh, of around 2.5. Um, so we tried both of these sets of cuts, but note that this is more for a W prime producing a lepton plus single invisible particle, and this is MW, which is also looking for a lepton plus single invisible particle. So neither of these is necessarily optimal for something like Susie Sutton, where you're looking at lepton plus three invisible particles. Uh, and we also have proposed this fitting range where we go up to 250 dB in PT and 500 dB in MT, in part because that's roughly where the SUSY channel is still, um, has decent statistics. So it will kind of die off once you get beyond uh, half a TV. And so in that sense, W prime searches are not quite uh, the right approach for SUSY lepton. So here's what we see for the signal and background distributions. So orange is Susie Slepton. This is using MW style cuts, where there's a hydronic repo cut, and you see the S over B in the, the lower panel. And so here you see you're, you're actually now going from above 10 to the minus 3 all the way up to even above 10 to the minus 2 in your signal and background compared to the MW region, where it really was like 10 to the minus 3 or even lower. Uh, and so here we have PT lepton, and here we have MT. And then we did the same with the W prime cuts. Um, so PT lepton, MT, again, similar S over Bs. In fact, actually, if you look at a plot of the S over Bs, they look almost one-to-one, -one, not quite exactly one-to-one, -one, but similar, meaning that neither of these set of cuts is necessarily better than the other one. However, because MW cuts away a lot of the signal and background from hadronic recoil, we will see that S over root B is actually better for, slightly better for the W prime. But again, neither of these is necessarily optimal, uh, but um, either one can be, can be used for basic preliminary analysis. And we find that we actually can, again, probe the same gap 
this compressed region, but now you're again moving away from the Jacobian peak of the W. And here uh, in red, again, no systematics, the kind of boundary condition of your sensitivity. In green, 2% now per bin, not 0.1 or 0.5, but really 2% per bin. In blue, 5% per bin. And in purple, 10% per bin. So this 10% per bin, which is honestly huge um, for like slightly away from the MW range, is able to essentially reproduce the best upton uh, sensitivity. And we include pilot for all this analysis. And the bins, as I showed in the previous plots, are now kind of logarithmically spaced. So they're around like 5 GB here. And then they get to as big as uh, 30 GB and MT, 35 GB and MT, um, as you move further and further away uh, because of the limited statistics. Uh, here we only consider Drillian as the background, but um, as you'll see, we considered some other backgrounds just in terms of accumulation and then comparison after the cuts to the Drillian, and we find that everything is within somewhere between three and five percent of that background. So we think that it should be under control, but this is still preliminary. Uh, yeah, so then that's what I've got for tail analysis. Looks like we still have some time. Uh, so I can show you very briefly hydrophilic Z prime. So this is modified production. So very similar to L mu minus L Z prime, you have a uh, coupling of Z prime to, but now baryonic standard model, standard model matter current, and a coupling to, again, some dark sector that's same assumptions, sufficiently light so that the Z prime is invisible, and GD is much bigger than GZ prime, such that it's dominantly going to decay to invisible particles. Um, here we have the distribution of the new physics, and you see that it's not like WDK. It's it got a kind of a wider tail in the again high high MT high PT region, and so that kind of motivates potentially doing another kind of tail analysis similar to Susie, where you really look at in this region and potentially do a cut and count. Oh, and then yeah, you also have to again think about Z, Z calibration as well. Uh, so this kind of uh, model is anomalous. If you just have V1B instead of V minus L, so you have to add some extra fermions and there are bounds on those masses of extra fermions. So again, here's GZ prime versus MD prime plot. Here they also have um, ZDK width, Z prime to two jets, but that's visible and we're looking at invisible. And so for us, for invisible Z primes, the strongest bound that we have so far found is the monojet bound at LHC. So you have keep, um, production of Z prime and, and then decaying to dark matter, but there's some initial state radiation jet um, that you would observe. And here's our, again, preliminary analysis, because we, I think this is still not have pile up yet, but we find that we're competitive with this uh, extrapolated monojet bound. So the monojet bound was done for varying GQ uh, down to, I think, 100 GB in Z prime mass. But below that, they don't have any results that we found. So we kind of just extrapolated from 100 GV. So this is not uh, quite a bound that they are reporting, but one that we've extrapolated. Uh, so we are also checking, uh, or in the process of checking the model photon bound. So instead of a, a jet emitted, you have a photon emitted in the initial state. Um, so we're currently trying to check and see if that is comparable to monojet, just so that we have a sort of confident bound um, from LHC. This kind of section. But you see here that even for this monojet, that we are competitive, if not better than, at light Z primes for uh, even half a percent systematics per bit. Um, and yeah, again, you could potentially do a tail analysis for this kind of model as well. So, brief summary of the idea um, these very precise measurements of delta mass can be used to. Uh, probe new physics because the measurements agree very well with the predictions. So any new physics producing the same final state could contaminate that uh, measured sample. And if that new physics produces differently shaped distributions that we saw with a lower peak or a fatter tail, then you can potentially rule out those kinds of models. Uh, adding new physics requires a simultaneous fit to the new physics parameters and the standard model parameter, MW. And you find that you could, in fact, shift MW by, by including that in the fit. 
And we categorize the kinds of contamination to modified decay, modified production, or the same final state without an on shell W. And then in conclusion, we find that we can place competitive, if not exceeding, bounds on L minus L tau Z primes, hydrophilic Z primes, neutrino fluid scalars. And then for MSSM in particular, we're really able, we really feel that we're able to close that gap on searches for, for light leptons around 100 GeV. Um, and you could even extend to beyond the MW peak and do a tail analysis for constraining to these leptons. And for future work, uh, you can also consider other models like uh, heavy neutrinos or inner doublet models. Uh, and yeah. Like, it's a basic statistical question you have here. Actually, now it's like we like if we like ask the question of like with this form of looking like does the like the new physics template like fit better? Then by by construction for us, the minimum in that entire uh, parameter space is at no new physics, uh, no shift to But so so that would be a high square to do. Correct. So, so so you can't like I mean with this can you can you do like a is there like a goodness of fit that's that I mean I, I guess in some sense the experiment already kind of done this right like, in in some way shape or form. In a sense, yeah, because we what we were finding is that I mean and this is kind of more of a hand wavy thing, but um, at least from what I've what we've seen that the the measurements agree very well with the predictions of just bigger Yeah. So it's unlikely that any new physics could somehow improve that fit. Mm -hmm. Unless it's very, very faint in physics that somehow only changes it slightly. Right. So, at least for the kinds of new physics that we're seeing, where or models that we're considering, where there is a noticeable difference, right? Like, there's no way that that L minus L tau with a peak well below the Jacobian peak should fit better than just a certain model. But if there was something that only like slightly affected the peak a tiny bit, but then you can't necessarily exclude it either, right? So yeah. Um, when you're looking at uh, these models, have you uh, also seen the possibility of uh, Higgs boson scalar appearing and uh, using the kinds of formulation where it can enhance the negative boson there? Um, so that was kind of this inert government model. It's similar to that. Uh, so that's so here in, in there's a version of Suzy in which they have so here I showed the diagram of Magra, but um, W plus to a smuon plus neutrino and the smuon back to W plus and the W and so then you have all these invisible particles in muon and you can do the same thing with uh, a charged case. Um, what we find is that uh, so they're they're um, they are sensitive to a specific region of parameter shift that's not in the MSSM region, where you can actually produce, uh, I think they look at some like hadronic reconstruction of W instead of laptop supplement for this particular channel. Um, we find that we're, we tried it, we're not really sensitive. And the reason actually is, do I even have it here? I don't have it here. But um, yeah, because it's this kind of cascading decay, uh, the PT of this, of this lepton is a lot softer than in the MSSM version that I showed earlier. And that soft lepton spectrum just means that it's very hard to gain any sensitivity if it also doesn't have a defining feature of the peak. So like only one L tau is softer but has a peak. But this is softer and doesn't have a peak. So we don't we can't really exclude it. Um, at least not in the sort of here in the shaded green region is the MSSM region. So we did look into it, but we found that it we can't really gain any uh, sensitivity in the regions that we're that, that uh, they're unable to reach. So they they're they're what what this Carpenter et al. model is doing is they're reaching these purple exclusions, and where they can't reach is actually where uh, the W is off shell. But we find that even with that off shell W, like we were doing for MSSM, you still really can't get any sensitivity, unfortunately. So, the 
the, the motivation for your new process is the this model effective for systematic than statistic, right? So systematic by systematic is most important. Yeah. For LHC, the systematics, the controlling the systematics is really important in order to gain any sensitivity by increasing the statistics. Meaning that because you have this, you know, one over sigma squared stat plus sigma squared statistics, if either one of them is too big, then they're the dominating one, right? And what we find that at, at, it's really a, more of a collider specific thing. So at the LHC, because the statistics can be really, really large, so that's a, a sigma stat that's small. I'm sorry, sigma sits is small. Sigma stat is too big if it's half a percent per bit. So you really want to lower it so that that sigma cis actually gains gains you something in your sensitivity. Does that make sense? Uh, the, the, my question, another question, why, why the CDF we can be the the double mass, the double mass and NH matlab result show here? Oh, that we don't have an answer. <laughs> we like we don't we don't have any answer to why is CDF measuring something different than Atlas, and how can you uh, uh, how can you sort of resolve the tension between the two? We have we have no answer. However, they're both claiming you know seventeen or sixteen MeV or smaller precision. Uh, the only difference being where where along the PT and MT spectrum is the peak of that uh, Jacobian peak, and so that um, we don't have any way of sort of resolving that. But the fact that they're both claiming such precision means that they each of those measurements could independently be sensitive to light new light new physics that's included. So, if not, uh, the rest of the speaker. Okay.